The topic of this session is uh, nurturing students to be socially responsible citizens. We got uh, six uh, speakers. Uh, five of them are very distinguished, except me. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, first of all, may I call upon uh, Professor Liu Chuan Sheng, okay, uh, to come onto the stage. Okay, so so uh, we we'll give her a big round of applause. Okay, the next speaker is uh, Mr. Alan uh, Solomon. Uh, we we'll welcome him. Okay. Um, and then Professor Fiso Asasa. Uh, Dr. N. Jardin. And uh, Professor Yi Jing Yi. And also, I will be one of the presenters of this session. Okay, so please welcome me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, our first speaker of this uh, session is Professor Liu Chuan Sheng. Um, actually, the uh, bio of the presenters uh, are printed in the uh, program, so I'm not going to go through um, the, all the details, uh, but I would like to uh, introduce uh, Professor Liu because she has very extensive diplomatic experience. Uh, when she was in the States, she established the first Confucius institution, Institute in North America. We also had one in Hong Kong, which is located in PolyU, and uh, we're we the only um, a university that has that uh, Confu Confucius uh, Institute. And uh, she has been chairperson of the University Council, uh, Beijing Normal University, since uh, June 2005. And she is currently acting as the um, deputy chairperson of the Chinese Society of Educational Development Strategy. And she is the director of the National Association of Research on Study Abroad. So without further ado, let us uh, welcome Professor Liu. Uh, very Glad to be in Hong Kong, to be in the uh, the second summit on university social responsibility and the International Conference on Surface Learning. But allow me to first express my gratitude that for the Polytechnic University that they have brought this great development on the academic world because this is a very meaningful topic. I myself were very much interested in this topic. Not only that they feel there is such a need to create this conference and also that they brought together members, uh, the academic members around the world in this uh, conference so that we have so many different universities coming here uh, to, to share with us their experience. So therefore, I must express my gratitude uh, to Hong Kong University and the President. Before I start my sharing, I really like this topic to how to nurture the students with social responsibility. Now, I come from Beijing Normal University. S perhaps you don't know about our university. You know that two years ago, we have uh, Mr. Mo Yan, who's the Nobel Prize winner. And in fact, that he was the alumni of our university. We have already 112 years of history. It is a the first integrated national university. We have 23,000 of a student and 2,000 professional teachers, and we have graduate student of and 13,000 and 8,000 of the bachelor student, undergraduate student. So that is a little bit of the background. Now, uh, we now get into our topic today that 
I would like to share three aspects of my thought with you. The three aspects is that um, because in order to nurture students with social responsibility, and also I heard from uh, the previous speakers, they told us very good meanings of what the students of with social responsibility should have. And so now that I would like to share three aspects with you of my own thought. The first is that students will need to how to nurture student in the in the volunteer service. The second, how to nurture student in the practical how to practice this in the in a society the third is a how to nurture students with social responsibility in our academic world the first is that how are we going to nurture students in the voluntary work because students need to be the pillar of our future need to be valuable need to be uh, useful for our world. So therefore that we want our students in our school, they every one of them, they need to participate in voluntary work every year. Voluntary work, it is a very significant path. We have we have a we have established this association of voluntary work for our students. And it is now that the, the, the 20th year of the history. And uh, every year, there are 30,000 of the voluntary students participate in this association and to help out in the voluntary work in all over the country. In this, we have um, organize a uh, lot of um, talks, seminars, and uh, and also that we help with the students who left behind. We help with the people who had a pneumoconiosis. So let me share with you in detail what this association do does. Our school, our university, we have five number one in the whole nation. It is in the education faculty and then the eco ecological faculty and the geographical and then also the social science. So this, these are our um, number one faculties in the nation. And then we are putting all these different faculties together and work together. Where we allow a platform for our students to create a lot of the activities and to bring those activities to different parts of our nation and to help them, uh, help students and help the children to learn through play and through practice, practicing um, in our environment of a different things. We also, we help students, we help children to learn about life through work and through play. And also we have a hotline that is the Edelweiss hotline. This is a national hotline. We, in this this hotline had already opened 25 years, and the voluntary voluntary workers, including students from university, from high school, and so while the, they were taking the hot, they working at the hotline, they would be able to help people with different issues. For example, they feel depression, and then also then they feel a lot of uh, a problem. So we have already surfaced 20,000 people. Um, who calling this hotline. We also have this center. The center have the psychological uh, psychologist and to help and to service those people. To give you an example, including our volunteer services in for the um, Olympics in Beijing in 2008, one uh, student uh, called Li Ju and uh, 15 of her 
relatives died in Wenchuan earthquake. However, she was very strong and she held, uh, she did an excellent job in the volunteering work. So we awarded her with, uh, um, you know, an excellent uh, volunteer at the end of the Olympic. Uh, we would like that our students could be thinking about the world, uh, thinking about others, and they could. Um, we would like to nurture their social response, sense of social responsibility during community work. Second, I think that we need to carry out more um, social community work. In our university, we have cal we have um, carried out a um, project for nurturing um, nur nurturing the community. Uh, basically, uh, you know, this means that thousands of students would participate in over 10,000 of different activities. Uh, take 2014, for example, this year we had 189 teams. Uh, Together, uh, we have 1,864 uh, people in total. They went out to uh, 34 provinces and cities around China. They have uh, provided educational services to rural areas, carrying out um, civil society research. Uh, environmental studies, cultural heritage, uh, looking after children of immigrant workers, etc. So this has given them an opportunity to really understand the societal issues in China, to uh, cultivate their empathy, to uh, encourage them to work more for communities in the future. Uh, another example, we have a student called Mr. Zhu Ping, and he has participated in this project for four years consecutively. He has organized teams to go to Yanko village, which is his hometown, and to uh, provide uh, education to those uh, children in the villages, he said, I would like to um, show love to, to those kids in the villages. In the meantime, to attract more attention of societies. And after he graduated, he has declined many other job offers. He has gone back to the village to teach those kids. You know, graduates from our university, you know, they are very, they're hot potatoes. All the schools would like to have them. But, you know, he was uh, so, he had so much social responsibility that he had actually gone back to his hometown. Another example, we had a student called Zhou Ling, uh, and uh, he, she had set up a foundation uh, for people with pneumonia. Uh, she was the first student or and her foundation was the first foundation was to help the immigrant workers with um, immigrant workers suffering from uh, particles caused uh, dust lungs and uh, she by end of 2013 she has already um, obtained uh, secured 12 million uh, in funding to which has in turn helped thousands of families and he she has said that uh, this is the social responsibility that I've learned from my university and in the picture you can see she is with this little girl whose parents have di died from dust lungs uh, disease so in our University, we have a lot of those students who are dedicated to, um, you know, to community. Uh, so we hope that our students could also uh, actively participate in the uh, big classroom of society rather 
done just a small classroom in the university. We hope that they could combine their actions and their knowledge together as what Mr. Tang has said. Today's university, you know, is no longer an ivory tower. Um, for all the students, we need to cultivate them uh, and educate them, uh, not only in our classroom, but also in society so that they could become useful to society. And third, to cultivate social responsibility in immersion of the culture. Uh, in our number, in our university, we have a very good um, culture on our campus. We have a long history. Uh, of 112 years. Uh, so our good traditions are uh, love the country, progress, being on honest, um, seeking the truth, being innovative, and set a good example for the students. Uh, our principle for educating the students are uh, to study to have the knowledge to reflect oneself in the meantime also thinking about the world because for normal universities we are educating our next generations of teachers and those teachers are going to educate other students so they must know uh, they must learn how to be noblest and learn to be an excellent uh, teacher uh, we also have a principle in our school, uh, which is learn to be an excellent teacher and act as an example um, for other persons. In our university, the excellent Chinese traditional culture is our core element. After reflecting on our university, you know, we have discovered that morality is the utmost importance. Um, so we have four modules, which is use morality to educate, use uh, culture to uh, brighten the students, to use arts to cultivate their emotions, and to use uh, actions to um, strengthen their uh, physiques. So we have these very important um, and very strong university culture, um, which the students are immersed in this environment, and they are uh, gradually influenced. Another example, our student called Gou Xiaolong, and he uh, is an excellent student, and he has been uh, met by Premier Wen Jiabao for three times. Eventually, he has gone back uh, to his hometown, and he has said that for students, it's very important that they need to shoulder responsibilities for the societies because um, our job is to help others. Therefore, after graduation, he has gone back to his hometown to work in a uh, very common uh, school to help with his uh, if to help those kids. So. Uh, in our university, we really drive our students um, to seek for progress. Uh, in summary, for universities um, to educate students with social responsibility, it is the common mission uh, for all universities. So let us work all together to teach our students to learn how to be responsible for themselves, for their family, for others, and for uh, the group, and for the nation, and for the world, and for the humankind. And only by doing so can we educate um, students who will make the world a better world for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Liu, for your most enlightening uh, speech. So as you can see, we got a uh, small clock. 
at the uh, bottom right hand corner. Uh, if time is up, I hope it will not lock the pump. Uh, <laughs> it should not be. I've not tried that before, but uh, it, uh, as it is green, it should be friendly. <laughs> okay. So our next speaker is uh, Mr. Alan uh, Solomon. Again, I will not read um, our, all his uh, bio. Um, Mr. Solomon became the dean of the uh, Jonathan M. Teach College of Citizen and Public Service at Tufts University early this year. Uh, previously, Mr. Solomon was the United States Ambassador to Spain and Andorra, and prior to his diplomatic service, Mr. So Solomon was an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and political activist. Of course, for the last uh, uh, role, we're very uh, interested to know more about this. Uh, Mr. Solomon has a long history of involvement at Tufts University. He served for 10 years as a member of the Board of Trustees, and he was the founding chair of the Teach College Board. Let us welcome Mr. Solomon. Thank you, Professor Sheck, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank uh, Hong Kong Polytechn Polytechnic University for organizing this summit on university social responsibility, CUM International Conference on Service Learning. I want to especially thank uh, President uh, Timothy Tong for your leadership, also Professor Angie Yuan, the Vice President for Institutional Advancement and Partnership. Uh, I want to say how impressed I am at how much progress you have made uh, so rapidly, and especially the mandatory courses, the credit-bearing mandatory service learning course that you've, um, that you've um, developed for undergraduates on service learning. Um, that is quite a, uh, a feat. I asked uh, one of your colleagues if there was any resistance by the faculty. I'd be very interested to hear a fuller explanation of that. And I also want to say how um, flattered I am to be with such a distinguished uh, panel. Uh, let me take a few minutes, um, and I have the clock in front of me, uh, <laughs> to describe um, how at Tufts University we nurture students to be socially responsible citizens and try to explain to you the role of Tisch College as a catalyst and driver of that mission. Um, we have a long, let me say a word about language. The language that we use to describe social responsibility includes terms like civic engagement and active citizenship. We talk about community service and public service, all of which refers um, to our sense of uh, institutional uh, social responsibility, which is something that uh, Tufts enjoys a long and proud history of, dating back to its founding as an institution in 1840, uh, a businessman from Boston, Massachusetts, Charles Tufts, gave 20 acres of land in Medford, Massachusetts to the Universalist Church to est establish a college. Of course, the Universalist Church itself has an outlook of universalism. Uh, in, its, in the charter of the university, there is a prohibition against religious tests for students and faculty which in the 21st century doesn't seem terribly radical, but in the mid-19th century was, was somewhat different. Um, and when Tufts was founded in 1852, at the core of its mission was to have an impact on society, similar to the motto of Polly U, which is to learn and to apply for the benefit of mankind. Our very first president, Hosea Ballou II, uh, said in 1852 that if Tufts College is to be a source of illumination as a beacon standing on a hill where its light cannot be hidden, its influence will naturally work like all light. It will be diffusive. So the university, Tufts, my university, Tufts University, has been a leader in civic engagement in the United States uh, for quite some time. Uh, a, a century after its founding, uh, we created the Center for Civic Education, uh, which became in the early 60s the Lincoln Filene Center for Citizenship and Public Affairs. In the 1970s and 80s, the Lincoln Filene Center was a leader in examining uh, America's um, civic uh, health. And in 1978, we sponsored a national conference on citizen participation. In 1987, there was another national conference on civic renewal. 
And then at the beginning of the new millennium, uh, Tisch College was founded originally as the University College of Citizenship and Public Service. We used to call it UCCPS, but since that was a little bit of a tongue twister, we went out looking for a benefactor and found Jonathan Tisch. Um, God bless him. So uh, Tisch College was founded approximately 15 years ago. Its purpose was to maintain the university's historic commitment to civic engagement. And its mandate was to promote a culture of civic engagement that would drive the university's mission in the 21st century. It's a very unique animal, both at the university and in higher education, because we are a college without our own students, without our own faculty, and without our own degrees. And yet we are a college led by a dean, because our mission is to work across the entire university to reach all 10,000 of our students at our nine schools, including schools of dental medicine, dental medicine, veterinary medicine, the Fletcher School of International Law and Diplomacy, Arts and Sciences, Engineering, uh, the Friedman School on Nutrition. And so we work at, uh, to reach all of our students at all nine of our schools on three campuses. I like to summarize our mission in its very simplest terms by saying that by instilling the values, the skills, and the knowledge of active citizenship, we teach our students to do good. We do this uh, in a number of different strategies. Uh, one is to provide an array of opportunities for experiential learning, to allow young people to acquire the civic skills, uh, to acquire civic skills while solving real world problems in much the same way as we've heard from others and will hear from other speakers. So some examples of our service learning opportunities are the Tisch Summer Fellowships. We provide internships over the summer at nonprofit and government agencies ranging from the Boys and Girls Club of New York City to the uh, Somerville Homeless Coalition in Massachusetts uh, to the Pentagon. Uh, at the Tufts University School of Medicine, every medical student is required to perform 50 or more hours of community service as part of their medical education. And we do this um, at clinics for, the, for, for, for patients who have no health insurance. Uh, students care for inmates in prisons. They do screenings for student athletes in local high schools. And next fall, we will launch a very innovative program called the One Plus Four Bridge Year Service Learning Program, which is something I hope to expand upon a little bit more tomorrow at the se session on service learning. But we will give students who are admitted to Tufts, who are applying during this fall and winter, and who would be admission, admitted, accepted for admission uh, to begin their studies next fall, we will give those, a group of those students, 50 students, an opportunity to do a year of full-time community service, either in the United States with established domestic service organizations like City Year, or overseas, similarly with, uh, with service organizations like Amigos de las Americas or Global Citizen Year, so before they come to campus to begin their formal academic studies, they will have spent a year, one plus four, um, doing full-time community service, which is an experience that we hope will bring those students to campus as leaders and better prepared for academic success. We also nurture students to be socially responsible citizens through their classroom learning working with the faculty to incorporate civic engagement and active citizenship in their teaching and research. Uh, we help um, sponsor courses on subjects ranging from philanthropy to community engagement to U.S. Pol politics and civic studies. Some of these courses are sponsored directly by uh, Tisch College. Some years ago, I had the occasion to teach a course on the American presidency uh, as a senior fellow at Tisch College. Uh, some of the courses exist in the various schools, but we list them in our uh, catalog of civic engagement courses. And in some cases, we support faculty with funding support uh, uh, to, pr to create new courses uh, in civic engagement. So last 
year we, we helped one faculty member in the political science department develop a course on cybersecurity and another uh, faculty member in the Department of Electrical Engineering to develop a course on the use of mobile technology for personal health. We also encourage faculty to apply their scholarship to both big social challenges and local community problems. And we try to bring students, faculty, and community members together to address issues like highway pollution or childhood obesity or the health of immigrant communities and food security. We also believe that one of the ways we can nurture students to be socially responsible is to expose them to people in, in the world who are doing socially responsible work, who are practitioners and public servants and political leaders and social entrepreneurs. We bring leaders from a variety of fields to campus to engage with the Tufts community on the important issues that face both our nation and our world. This fall, we've, we, have ha we have hosted, or we will host, United States Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, the mayor of Boston, uh, the newest mayor in 20 years, Marty Walsh, and the former Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sebelius, who gave us a very candid and fascinating account uh, of the passage and implementation of, the, of what is commonly known as Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. Um, and we will working on a robust program of speakers for this spring. While well, much of our focus obviously is on, oh, I've also run into a problem. I hope this won't count against my time. Help. A lot of these fixing it. So while much of our focus is on, oh good. While much of our focus is on our tough students, Tisch College is also a leading research enterprise that specializes on research on youth political engagement and the state of American democracy. Uh, in fact, the college is one of the, our nation's leading authorities on civic engagement. Uh, we are currently conducting a major study. Uh, involving over 700 colleges and universities across the country on voting rates by college students and what creates a positive and participatory political camp culture on campus. We recently partnered with the White House to host a White House summit on civic learning and national service where we brought leaders of, from government and higher education together to talk about the role of higher education in restoring our country's civic and democratic health. We do all these things to nurture our students to be socially responsible citizens because we believe that communities, nations, and the world are stronger and more just when citizens actively participate in their civic life and in their democracy. Our own re research, however, shows that this is not only a moral imperative, it also has tangible academic, economic, psychosocial, educational benefits. So we know from our research that in American cities with higher levels of civic engagement, as measured by the number of people who belong to community groups or, worked with their, or work with their neighbors to solve problems, those cities actually recovered faster than others from the economic crisis of 2008. We also know that students who get involved in serious civic work perform better academically and report better mental health. And we know that civic work teaches important skills like problem solving and working with diverse people that is valued in the job market. This is an especially exciting time to be educating students to be socially responsible because today young people want to solve real world problems and they want to be part of something bigger than themselves. 57% of the generation we call millennials, young people who were born around the turn of this, earlier actually than the, the, the generation that are students today in higher education. 50% of millennials in the United States did volunteer work at some point in the last year, which is a higher percentage than any other generation. So for example, in 2013, the service program Teach for America 
received 57,000 applications for only 6,000 uh, slots. Young people today want diverse ways to get involved and they want to see tangible results. So provide, by providing opportunities to students to engage in acts of social responsibility, we believe that we are not creating demand, we are responding to appetite. At the same time, young people in the United States are understandably cynical about American politics and they're reluctant to participate in their own democracy. So only about one-fourth of young Americans between the ages of 18 and 29 typically vote in midterm elections of the type that we just had. And in fact, in these recent elections this month, only 21.5% of young Americans voted. And in a recent poll of this generation, when, when young people were asked if they are likely to do community service, 67% said they were. But those who would go to a political rally were less than 40%, and those who would volunteer for a political campaign were only a third. So let me just end by reiterating why this is important to Tufts University and to all of higher education. We hold to a historic belief in the importance of higher education to a vibrant democracy. Following World War II, President Harry Truman established a commission to examine the state of American higher education. The 1947 Truman Commission tied the mission of higher education in the United States to preparing students to participate in their democracy. That commission said education is the foundation of democratic liberties. Without an educated citizenry alert to preserve and extend freedom, it would not long endure. And in 2000, when the Tisch College was first conceived and a declaration of purpose was drafted, it read, we believe that the preservation of our democracy is dependent upon the realization of all citizens that as we enjoy the rights and privileges that democracy bestows on us, so must we accept the duties and responsibilities it demands from us. And as I said earlier, by educating students for active citizenship, we teach them to do good, and as a result, we can make the world better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Solomon, for your most uh, stimulating speech particularly on the observation that the uh, young people are quite uh, politically disengaged. I think if we have time, we can discuss this a bit further. Our next speaker is uh, Professor Asa um, the, from uh, Israel. Uh, Professor Asa is head of the School of Social Work at the University of Haifa, Faculty of uh, Social Welfare and Health Sciences and is currently serving as a member of IASSW board. Um, he completed his MSW and PhD in social work from Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and he has published in many areas, including Jewish-Arab relations in Israel. I think uh, this area is very important. If you heard the news uh, this morning, some tragic incident uh, occur in Jerusalem. So uh, I think research in this area is really, really important. So let us uh, welcome uh, Professor Asa. Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the president of uh, Polytechnic uh, Hong Kong University and of course the vice president, my friend Angelina Yan. Uh, I am proud to be here, uh, and I hope maybe soon we can sign agreement between the Polytechnic uh, University and our university, and we hope that we can host you maybe in the future. Uh, and as a, as a deputy chair of the Planning and Budgeting Committee on the Council of Higher Education, we can try to show you our uh, commitment to social responsibility in different uh, communities uh, in Israel, as mentioned, in Arabs and Jews, and in Jews in different uh, community, and in Arabs in different uh, community. Today, I am going to speak more about 
the involvement of the higher education uh, institution in the community policies and of planning and budgeting committee of the Council of Higher Education uh, in Israel. And tomorrow, I, through the panels, I will speak a little bit about my uh, uh, university. Uh, since 2006, and uh, another thing, it's a it's small world, that uh, me and Ellen, that we act 20 years ago as uh, in the board of uh, New Israel Foundation, which push the social responsibility in Israel according to the country, we didn't meet more than 15 years. And we met here <laughs> by the issue <laughs> of Angelina, and it's really a uh, uh, small world. <laughs> Since 2006, the uh, PBC, the P Planning and Budgeting Committee, has allocated a budget to encourage involvement of institutions of higher education in the community. In 2010, the PVC, the budget social involvement was just 2.0 million uh, uh, Israeli uh, uh, shekel after changing the activity model and in light of expanding the scope of activity and an annual budget increase was a draft and budgeting for 2013 was 9 million shekel. It's because I push from the Council of Higher Education for this uh, uh, issue more and more. The Authorized Planning and Budgeting Committee for 2014 academic year allocated to higher education institution involving in the community will be approximately 9 million shekel, and the budget for the next year, it's going to be uh, 10 million uh, uh, shekel. It means the issue of social responsibility, it's more and more begin to be in the priority of the whole institution around the country. Budgeting breakdown for the 2014, it's 5 million uh, flagship project, it's the big project, and 3 point million for academic courses in covering practical social responsibility, approximately 500,000 literal project in addition to expand some uh, 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 national Israeli shekel, one million allocated by the Ministry of Education will try to uh, encourage the Ministry of Education to be part of this uh, project. And of course we, we, we see that we have a, a scholarship for the students and we uh, push uh, uh, also uh, not just scholarship for excellency in this uh, 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 issue and to give uh, uh, excellency scholarship and also to follow the whole project with research and to learn from our activity and to try to develop more and more our uh, uh, plan. Uh, strategic in 2014, a new activity model was authorized, social flagship project which allowed mutual feedback, uh, uh, feedback between the community and the institution of higher education courses including practical society activity and the academic uh, year of 2014 and 15, in addition to the activity model, is planning in, fo in form of literal courses with a focus of exposure of the academic world. Leading social uh, flagship project, the higher education institutions are required to formulate and adapt leading social policy in accordance with their consideration, including their specialist field of study, education, nursing, designing, and planning, and again to the Polytechnic University. I am proud that your university, they are excellency in engineering and technology, and the other side, they want to take the social responsibility uh, as another flag, and it's, it's a good model for, uh, to follow it for other universities. In according with this policy, they must engage in social projects for involvement in the community in areas with true potential for social change and to position of higher education institution as significant positive element also in the social arena. They must aim to develop projects and they are both natural and contributed to the academic environment as well as including external and non-academic authorities. Leading social uh, flagship project the committee's budgeting aim to give the project an initial push forward and to help create suitable inf infrastructure to the sustain the project even without the support of, the, of our budget. We want to see 
that after we give a little bit uh, uh, seed money, we want to see the institution go ahead and raise this flag in, the, in their campuses. The planning and budget committee participation in the proposed project will be authorized based in intra-institutional competition according to the following criteria. The project aim must focus on social goal in the community outside the campus and benefit both institution and the community through cooperation. The organizational, pedagogic, and practical aspect of the program must involve the institution, administrative, and the teaching staff and, uh, and student. This to ensure long-term institutional commitment and varied, high-quality, uh, dynamic activity. Leading social uh, 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 flagship project, the institution, rather than external organization, will take the lead and responsibility for the project. The aim of this project is to have a high quality responsible, responsible and controlled impact in both environment and in the academic institution, enabling long-term sustainable change. The committee will give preference of the program that will include in the institution ongoing academic activity in which staff member will uh, participate and will be vista of the independent long-term development. Each project should include institutional control and evaluation mechanism. Preference will give to the project with the details of the significant evaluation mechanism. The project should include students, social activists, and involvement of higher education institution staff of minimum scope for of two uh, hours a week. The Planning and Budget Committee will participate in funding the project according to the number of activity uh, student in the organization with ceiling of 100 students. Each student on the project will be budgeting at the sum of something like 5,000 uh, 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 national Israel shekel. Minimum eligibility of the planning budgeting participation is two hours per week per annum, and the budgeting will be relative basis with ceiling of the 500 per project, 500,000 per project to the project budget consideration. The planning budget committee steering committee for higher education institutional involvement in the, in the community will receive higher quality budget. Institution that will submit flagship project will be at the front for front in the following uh, uh, parameters, participation of the administrative and academic staff in the project. We want to see administrative staff uh, part of this project and also the academic staff part of this uh, project. Uh, uh, over several years, the path of the quality of research uh, combining of the project visibility and the project. The course offer at least two credit points for the uh, academic component and additional two credit point scholarship for the activity component. Academic course on social topic, the course should combine theoretical study and social and uh, professional content. The course aim should focus on social goal in the external community and should be designed for the benefit of the academic community. The course will include student social activity related to the continent uh, uh, studies, minimum social activity for planning and budgeting committee participation will define as at least two hours of activity per week, to have activity, activity planned and executed in the collaboration with the, through ongoing contact with the community, the practicum will not authorize, activity must accompany by an official academic authority. Courses involve an additional cost because the student activity, the expenses that will be authorized for the planning and budget committee, budgeting are student scholarship and travel cost, contribution to funding, teaching assistant and coordinator, external expert and material activity planning. The planning budgeting committee will participate in evalua evaluation studies to examine the impact of the courses and activities in the student and in the community. The, the courses is approved, approved by the institution authorized body. The committee will enable to create 
uh, additional models and framework of academic institution of engaging for implementation of the manifesto. Academic courses in, uh, in uh, uh, the Planning and Budget Committee participation is not authorized for the benefit of the uh, uh, publicity or overhead expenses. No more than two legal clinics, we, we, we try to develop a clinics through the institution, will be budgeting in the, each institution. The courses can include in both baccalaureate and master degree courses. In the academic year 2014 and 15, Planning and Budget Committee will support the institution to receive its budget within the framework of its higher education institution involvement in the community activity. In addition to two areas mentioned above, this will include the advancement of later project with the common aim which will enable the inter-institutional collaboration among other things. The first literal project that we wish advance in is to study the program for various marginal population who are not necessarily the target of, for higher education. The program activity model will enable social leverage through the use of the academic institution, uh, cumulated knowledge, human resources, both staff and student, and physical infrastructure. This will take place during the evening hours after the main academic activity is finished. Studying on the campus will expose sector of the population who currently have no access to higher education, to academic learning experience, to student and staff disciplines, and uh, worldwide view creating dialogue among different population segment, which do not usually encounter each other in, in Israel. This encounter will strengthen and enrich the student from uh, the community, will bring people together and reduce alienation experienced by those on the margin of society. Who should uh, uh, higher education institution involve in the community? We have the institution, the society, community, and the student, and it's win-win situation. For the benefit of the institution, promoting the outlook of the prospective community involvement to, the, to be an integral part of the public and the academic institution, connecting the close environment relevance of social needs, creating and developing professional knowledge, creating partnership, developing solidarity within the institution, following a current worldwide trend using community as a field, which obey to learn uh, uh, material, educating staff member to involve taking initiative and social responsibility, for the benefit of the student, educating the student to become involved and take initiative and social responsibility, educating the student as to how to use the knowledge for the benefit of the society, initiating high quality project, investing in human capital, constructive, responsible social involvement and leadership, encouraging social institution and personal activism, increasing the authority of the institution in activity in the field which currently depend the shared table foundation and external partnership. Changing the activity model has led to repercussion of the system, increasing the budget and changing the budgeting method, the addition of new courses, rethinking the institution, increasing demand, support activity. The academic focus has led to involvement of the institution, administration, academic staff, advanced degree student, a new organization, and to collaboration with the staff of this unit for social involvement and dean of, of the students. Okay, I respect the time, just... <laughs> <laughs> we wish to expand the activity, engaging, promote, soar uh, of the higher education in the formal education system, higher school and uh, junior school, among students from the low socioeconomic background, encouraging, creating platform of inter-institution collaboration, increasing the institution commitment to issue and continuing in the current process, improving the quality of the project and the courses, of course. Thank you very much.
Okay, um, it is really amazing to have that time, right? <laughs> um, thank you, uh, Professor Azza, for your uh, very interesting talk. I, I think uh, we are glad to know that uh, the government gives the budget, and then they have increased the budget, right? And also, they uh, did very good evaluation work. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. N. Jardine. Uh, she is the director of the uh, Student Equity and Disabilities Unit and of the uh, Aspire Outreach Program of the University of South, New South Wales. And uh, she completed her PhD uh, with the University of Melbourne and her PhD thesis is entitled Indicators of Persistence and the Influence on the First Year Experience of Students from Low Socioeconomic Backgrounds. I think this, um, her interest uh, coincides uh, with uh, the public concern about poverty in Hong Kong now. So, uh, Dr. Jardin, please. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Timothy Tong for, and your colleagues for inviting me here today. It's a great honour to be speaking here amongst such distinguished speakers. I'm a member of the professional staff at my university rather than the academic staff, so uh, please excuse a few nerves. First of all, I'm going to put the University of New South Wales, Australia into a little bit of context for you. Um, and then go on and talk about one particular program that we run that helps to nurture our students to be socially responsible. Our university campus is a very large campus. We are boarded on one side by the race course and are very close to the best beaches in Sydney. So our students have plenty of distraction from their studies if they so wish. I won't bore you with a lot of facts, but I will just take two from, from this slide. We are a very large university. We have over 50,000 students, and we have over 13,000 international students. Oops. That makes us a very diverse community. On our last count, we spoke over 140 languages across the campus. Um, so we are one of the most diverse student populations in Australia. A third of our students come from disadvantaged backgrounds, first in family, uh, to attend university. So it's very important for us at UNSW Australia to promote global citizens who are socially responsible. And we feed that through both our strategic intent and through the graduate capabilities that uh, we promote in our students. And I've just drawn a, a few of the strands here on this slide. Uh, we very much focus on promoting leadership amongst our students and promoting the idea of being global citizens. So we're about developing leaders who we hope will go out across the world and help shape the future. And to do that, uh, one of the things we do is our university leadership program. And the interesting thing about the leadership program is that it's not driven by our academic staff. It is actually driven by the professional staff. It was developed and is taught by professional staff. Um, it also doesn't count for credit at this moment. So it is very much about promoting advantages for the student, for them in their own growth, rather than giving them credit points to their degree. We do give them something, and I'll talk a bit about that in, in a minute. So the aim of the program is to develop leadership capabilities through a socially responsible co-curricular framework. So we've used a service learning type framework for developing this program. The three main objectives are to enhance student capabilities, skills and knowledge, to enhance the student experience that we give to our students across uh, the university 
so that we are helping meet the aims and objectives of the university in developing globally focused graduates. And it's also about creating opportunities for our students to go back into the communities that are around our university and, and give back to those communities through, through their engagement with it. The value for the students in this program is the development of soft skills, those communication skills, uh, they, they build confidence, they change their attitudes we found towards the world and towards themselves during the course of the program. It helps them make new connections, both within the university and external to the university. We believe it gives them a little edge when they're looking for employment because they have another arsenal of skills to, to add to their portfolio. Importantly for us, given the size of our international cohort, it actually gives a good opportunity for our local and international students to meet and interact. Some of the, the program is based on group work and we encourage our international and our local students to work together uh, on certain projects. And in order that the students can show tangibly, especially to employers, that they've taken part in the, in the program, it's recorded on the Australian Higher Education Graduation Statement. This is a statement that all students get that really is about their civic engagement and their social responsibility engagement, if you like. All students in Australia get it, and it's in, in, a, in addition to their academic transcript. This is highly prized by students um, because it enables them to, sh to show employers something different other than their academic results. The framework involves 60 points of engagement. So although professional staff have developed it, we have used a very academic model to, to do it. The 60 points of engagement work out to about 30 hours of commitment. It's open to all students, both undergraduate and postgraduate, and they can join the program at any time in their, their degree program. Because they can join at any time, it's very much self-paced and based on their own interests. Um, if they can take their own time in actually completing it. So some will complete it within a year, some will complete it over the three or four years of their course. It's not prescribed, it's very much up to them. There are three key components to the, to the program. The learning they gain through workshops, the self-reflection that they do, and the community engagement uh, that they have. And I'll just go through each of those components. We provide a range of skills-based work workshops, which are worth uh, 50 points in, in the scheme of the whole program. They must include, they must do two core programs, uh, introduction to the leadership program, and either what is leadership or community impact. Then they take three electives from over 40 workshops that are offered. We started this in 2012 and we ran it with just 15 workshops. Don't forget this is run by professional staff, so we started small to get our pilot right before we built up. We now offer 46 workshops. Uh, and as I've already mentioned, it's predominantly professional staff who teach into the program. There are five strands of workshops, leadership foundations, awareness of self and others, community engagement, global citizenship and professional development. And this slide just gives you a few examples of the kinds of workshops that, that are uh, run. We run the workshops throughout the year we also run an intensive block of workshops just before semester starts, which we've actually found to be a better model for our students, that they like to come in and do a run on workshops rather than fit them in through their studies through semester. The self-reflection is a very important part of the program and uh, we, we promote this very strongly. It's, very, it's quite structured at the beginning 
We do two exercises across the program. We get them to reflect on leadership, what they think leadership is at the beginning, and then at the end we get them to talk about their journey. And often we find at the start they are, they are focused on what they, they as individuals can get out of the program. At the end, they're often reflecting about the community institutions in which they've worked. The community engagement is obviously a key component to the program and we expect at least 20 hours of volunteer work. The students are responsible for setting up their own placements, so they actually have to go out and source where they're going to do their placement. We now have over 140 community groups partnering with us in this program. They can work within an area of UNSW. For example, they can work on my outreach program, which works with disadvantaged schools, or they can uh, work outside. Most choose to work outside, and we have a, um, a very distinguished list of um, partner, partner uh, organisations. The community engagement can take any form, and it is negotiated with the, um, the institution they're going to. And so far, in, since 2012, we've had over 4,000 hours of volunteering. So, so uh, our students really are engaging uh, with, with um, uh, organisations. We began with just 262 students in 2012 because we did a very soft launch. So we didn't do much promotion amongst the students. We did promote it heavily, well not so heavily, but we promoted it in the second year and we found that we reached our capacity um, in year two. We couldn't take any more students into the, into the course and we're actually at capacity now. We have um, over 1,500 students enrolled. 147 have completed so far. Most are quite far on and most are choosing to complete it over the whole program of their degree, over, over their whole degree program. The split of local and international students is 77% uh, to 23%. Uh, so it's not far off the actual split across the, the student population. And again, the female-male split um, reflects the student population as does the undergraduate postgrad split. It appears to be our business students who see most value in this um, because I think they can see that it, it adds value to their employment prospects. Um, but we do have engagement across all faculties. The evaluation so far has been very good on the program. It is early days, but we believe that the model is a good model and uh, is certainly working for the benefit of our students. The interesting, one of the interesting side results of the, of the program is that we have had three students who've recently gained full-time employment with the community organisation in which they volunteered. So there's been a very tangible outcome uh, for those students. The students are very keen on this. They, we have uh, a lot of engagement in volunteer work and the students actually really like the structured nature of this program and the fact that they come out with, with a set of skills, tangible skills, that they can show an employer at the end. Um, these are the kinds of feedbacks that, that students have come up with. Our community partners are also very, very keen on the program, and we actually now have community partners asking if they can join. As, as students actually are responsible for their own placement, we will pass on those leads, but, but we do think an important part of the program is students actually getting out there and sourcing their own placements. I think the, the model and the fact that we are involving both our professional staff in this makes this program slightly different from a lot of programs that are run in universities. 
Uh, we, as I say, we don't give credit for it, although we may be looking at giving service learning credit for, for components of it. Certainly, uh, it is a program that our un university students have embraced, uh, and we think that it is a model that, that other universities might be involved, uh, interested in. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jardin, for your um, very interesting talk. Actually, I will also talk about leadership in my presentation. Now, uh, before I introduce the last but one uh, speaker, uh, after my presentation, there will be some time for Q&A. If you have any questions, uh, please write them down in the blank paper you have, and then you can pass, uh, uh, to, uh, pass them to my uh, colleagues, okay? So I will consider your question after that. Our next speaker is Professor Yi Jing Yi, uh, Doctor of Laws. She is a Deputy Party Secretary of Peking University and Dean of the Institute of uh, Labor Law and Social Security Law of Peking University. In addition to the administrative and teaching work in Peking University, Professor Yi served as the Vice President <laughs> and Chief Secretary of China Law Society, Social Law Studies Institute, and Vice President of Women Talents Specialty Committee, Chinese Talents Research. Let us welcome Professor Yi. Honorable experts, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to thank Hong Kong Polytechnic University to invite us to participate in the second summit on universal, university social responsibility come inaugural international conference on service learning. I would also like to uh, thank Mr. Tang and Mr. Yuan to have invited us to come to this summit. Uh, I thank for I thank you all for your effort. And here I would like to share with you our experience uh, in Peking University. Well, this time, this summit, we have the theme on university social responsibility. It has also reminded us of uh, the first president of Beijing University, Mr. Tsai Yuanpei. He said the purpose of learning is to benefit ourselves as well as our society. Uh, so, which in other words, it means that we need to have a framework for uh, social responsibility for the past 116 years since establishment of our university. Peking University has always um, tried our best to exert our influence and to educate and nurture graduates with social responsibility. This is our main mission. To educate our students to become people with a sense of responsibility, this is also a common consensus among other universities around the world, which we could um, feel from the speeches from my other colleagues. Well, to cultivate a sense of responsibility. I believe that one, we need to have knowledge. We also need to uh, uh, learn it through practice. On the practice level, both in China and overseas, the overseas universities, they mainly adopt the service learning model. In mainland China, we uh, adopt the platform of practical education, in my opinion, service learning and practical education. Their content and their purpose are the same. They're both for developing uh, the students in a holistic fashion. So 
Here I'm going to talk about it on two fronts. One is on from knowledge to understanding. And second is from understanding to practicing. I would like to share with you some of the lessons that we have learned. And um, the first part on value guidance from knowing to understanding. Social responsibilities uh, cultivation is the important the foundation for the sense of social responsibility for Beijing University. We have always valued the importance on uh, educating our students on this front. Our first president of the university, Mr. Tsai, uh, he has always emphasized the importance of social responsibility. Mr. Hu Shi, who was also one of our uh, presidents, the, he has also mentioned the importance of the view uh, to educate the young students. In our education, we emphasize on educating in all aspects, in all fields, and educating through the process. We have included all this in all aspects of students' life to guide our students to focus on the national issues and national responsibilities. When we talk about throughout the process, what we are saying is that for the students from when they enter the university till when they finish their degree, during this whole um, period in the university, we would start educate them. For example, on the first day, we would um, organize tours uh, for the students to educate them how Beijing University has been closely connected with the development of the nation and how it has gone through ups and downs with the nation. And at the uh, graduation ceremony, we would also invite excellent alumni to come back to give talks on their personal stories. These are pictures shown on the tour. Since 2014, in order to develop potential of our teaching staff, we have also organized professors tea hour. We invite those famous uh, professors to talk about their lives, to share their life philosophies. Here, this is a picture of professor uh, of our president. I told him, during this tea hour, you're not the professor anymore. Uh, we just want to know about your life story to enlighten our students. This was the first tea party. It was very popular. Our students also uh, welcomed this activity very much. So th this is a very popular activity. Second, on our graduates, we have this activity with the theme of um, home orientation, basically for asking the students to go back to their hometowns since 2012, we have uh, over hundreds of Beijing graduates. They have gone back to the hometowns, mainly located in western part of China. In terms of in all aspects, what we are stressing is that we would include social responsibility in all areas of the student's life to use the richness of the campus life to influence our students. In 2012, we have held um, 
a theater show, uh, which tells the story of Professor Wang Xian. Uh, the students were playing Professor Wang Xian in this uh, theater. Uh, this was a very moving uh, theater show. In recent years, uh, based on the China Dream, we have also included in our theme uh, party through asking students to participate in uh, their China Dream competition, speech competitions, and uh, drawing competitions, photography competitions, etc. We have built it around the themes of um, building a strong China, building a China uh, with the rule of uh, law, etc. So through this kind of activities, we were able to expand our principles, uh, not only in real life, but also to the cyberspace. Uh, in all of our departments, we have opened a WeChat platform, and uh, one is to uh, find stories which are affecting uh, and affectionate uh, and uh, Wei Ming stars. And uh, Wei Ming is uh, and Yan Yuan, these are the beautiful names that have been uh, given to Peking University. So these stories are mainly for people and students and classmates around you which have been very dedicating and have been contributing to society. These are students, uh, these are stories that could uh, educate our fellow students on uh, what they have done to society. Second, from understanding to practicing, practice-based training. We believe that you could not talk about these things on paper. We believe that all of these should be put into practice for Beijing Upper uh, Beijing Peking University. We have written this principle in the uh, articles of the principles of the school. Here, we also emphasize the practice um, of morality and community work. Uh, these are all very targeted for our students based on which year they're in. We have community service, um, educating the poor, uh, assisting uh, children in remote villages, etc. Here, you can see, you know, we encourage sophomores to participate more in community work, to learn more about the real world. For junior students and uh, senior students, uh, we advise them to participate in internships for those students uh, which are obtaining their postgraduates uh, because their majors is more focused. So the university would help them to get obtain research opportunities. And in overseas projects, we are also benefiting from poly use uh, project and to give us opportunities for practice. So that uh, we hope that to turn the theory into practicality and um, that help us a lot in strengthen the effective effectiveness. We understand what we need in our nation and so that we we practice what we need in our nation in reality and then we help our students to learn about all these different issues and explore the issues and when they practice in the reality they learn about how to confront those reality issues and put their theory put what they learn in practice effectively and in doing so to solve some of the problem that we have in our nation. 
we we started in uh, 1982. So over th three decades, every year, then there are thousands of the students being distributed to different villages to help the village development, to talk to the villagers, to understand their problem. There, let me share with you two stories. This is uh, hap this happened in July. We have 20 teachers and students. They form a group and they visited Hainan Sansha, this area. They are the first people visiting the Sansha city, and they have to overcome a lot of the practical difficulties. For example, it is a high elevated place and high humidity and high temperature, and so they learn about the issue uh, the eco issue that confronted the area. So within just one week, they work together. Of course, uh, previously they have conducted uh, two months of research about the geographical um, uh, background. And so within one week, they have completed the report, uh, the eco report, which consists of uh, 40,000 words in this report and uh, a lot of people in fact that they were inspired that they are going to work in Shansha city after their graduation another story is that we have a Charles um, it is a Charles project it started in 2012 2002 and every summer there are several hundred of the graduates they participate into Charles this uh, China health and uh, elderly tracing uh, survey. And so they would go to these different villages and then they would visit 17 different 17,000 households and they would need to visit and talk to the people who are uh, from 30 to um, 80 and so that they uh, compile the very valuable report on the aging society on the issue they are confronted with and in, in regarding the health and the pension scheme of our nation so that we have and then all of these uh, report being put into a database and in fact that it has benefited over 7,000 of the institutes and the organization in our society they ha it is an open platform of a database base and the uh, data can be used. So it is really valuable. Maybe my, in the interest of time, I'm going to talk uh, just briefly, okay? And uh, so another is that we have formed the workshop in the 2012 that we have um, annually 300, over 300 of these are practice group going into the society. And at the end, they will be sitting together to share and to explore and to discuss and how to make things in an even more sustainable way. Another is that we need to develop this practice group and a volunteer group in a more sustainable way because that through this kind of uh, practice work they can benefit the society but the work needs to be sustainable so that we have uh, developed a lot of the sustainable workshop in such a way to help these projects to be um, con to continue we at the moment we have a we have a uh, lot of work done based on these development so we can connect the graduates from the school and also the people that who are in the community they work together and to help everyone to gain valuable experience I hope this is a um, uh, valuable insight and uh, to share with you our thought in how to nurture our students in a sustainable way and practical way. Thank you. Um, thank you, Professor Yi, for your uh, most enlightening presentation on the practical education in uh, Peking University. Okay, um, the last presentation is uh, my, my paper. So I don't, I don't think I need uh, to introduce myself. You just, 
Turn to page 24 of the program. <laughs> but there is one thing I have to clarify. You see, my lips are very red. And then I have to uh, 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 um, say that I have not used any lipstick. <laughs> I don't know why, but and anyway. Um, okay, my topic is uh, change the students before changing the society. Um, if we look at the um, literature, in fact, in the past several decades, there are many criticisms about contemporary university education. Okay, so sex is that higher education was not effectively meeting the challenge of nurturing students' sense of civic responsibility. And also, uh, Bringo and Hatcher also say we have to reconsider our mission to be that of educating students for life as responsible citizens. And also, uh, Harry Lewis, I think uh, we're very familiar with him. He was in Hong Kong uh, in August, we met him. And, and uh, very reviewing, he said that I have almost never heard discussions among professors about making students better people. Okay, so, so I think this is a very strong criticism. And of course, uh, another one, uh, uh, we must recognize a direct responsibility, uh, the civic learning of the students. So what are our ideals? Now the ideals, uh, again, Lewis said that uh, we need to nurture students to take responsibility for their own lives and for civic society. And also another scholar said that uh, what we need is to equip students uh, with relevant competence required for their social and professional integration. Successful career and personal development is a key mission of higher education sector. Okay, so personal development, how much we have done to foster the personal development of our students. Bob, if you read his book, uh, he said, what are the ethical and social responsibilities of today's modern university? He also strongly criticized that we have not done our, 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 our jobs uh, well. So, um, surface learning, I think several colleagues have already talked about this. So surface learning has been used as, uh, or regarded as one vehicle that we can help a student to grow. And um, at PolyU, uh, 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 President, President Tong uh, talked about this this morning. In fact, before graduation, every student is required to take a three-credit surface learning subject in our university. And now we are having around 3,000 students per year, and the figure will rise to 4,000 something next year. And uh, we have a lot of subjects. Uh, we have 50 plus subjects now and we will increase it to around 70 something. And then uh, we got a lot of students taking this. And we also got evidence showing that, in fact, the students have changed after joining the surface learning subjects. Okay, so it seems that it is very good. But I think we have to ask a, vo a very fundamental question. Are university students ready to serve? Okay. Besides passion, what are the fundamental skills today need? What are the psychosocial needs of our students? And of course, the famous quotation is that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we all think that it is good, service learning is good, but are we prepared to do it in a good way or are our, uh, uh, our students prepared to do it? Okay, if you look at uh, some of the research, we are really depressed because we see that there is, has been a tremendous, tremendous decline in empathy amongst university students in the West and also in Hong Kong as well. And then in, uh, decline in empathy in uh, medical students uh, and, and uh, most important of all, uh, students becomes more and more egocentric in the past three decades. Okay, so if you look at some of the longitudinal and uh, trend studies, this is the uh, problems we should seriously look at. And if we look at some of the research in Hong Kong, uh, there are many developmental issues about university students. And one of them is they don't have enough sleep. <laughs> they don't come at early classes, okay, they don't have enough sleep. And you know that one of the signs of ADHD, that is attention deficit disorder, is that they, those kids don't have enough sleep. Okay, so um, that, that, that is something we should look at. 
And then I always ask my colleagues, do adolescent developmental issues disappear overnight? Certainly not, because we got so many high school uh, studies saying that uh, students got a lot of problems. How come when they enter university, those problems suddenly disappear? Okay, so I think at uh, New South Wales, they use uh, professionals to do the leadership program, but at PolyU, we uh, think that uh, it might be a more uh, courageous approach if we do it in a credit-bearing manner, okay? So, um, this is how we look at leadership and intrapersonal development. Uh, before the students change the society, I think they have to change themselves. And then this motto is very consistent with the Confucian belief that before one can create peace and harmony in the world, one must be able to govern one's country. Before one can govern one's country, one must be able to regulate one's family. And before one can regulate one's family, one must be able to cultivate one's virtue and character. So we do believe that the change comes from within, okay? So um, at PolyU, we have a uh, leadership subject. Actually, we have designed it and we are offering it to uh, more than 2,000 uh, students uh, now. So uh, this is what we cover. We use the framework called positive youth development because we do believe that young people have talents, uh, they got good attributes, but we need to nurture uh, their psychosocial skills. So here you can see uh, self-understanding, emotional competence, spirituality, resilience, things like that. Because employers are always saying that our graduates, they lack basic uh, interpersonal skills and they don't uh, really understand themselves. They lack uh, resilience. So it's the reason why we do this. And then uh, we got two piloting exercises before the commencement of the four-year curriculum. So the first one, uh, we uh, conducted multiple evaluation strategies, so including objective outcome evaluation. So it is just a very simple pre-test, post-test uh, design, so you can see the students actually change uh, to us the, the better direction, okay? So we had uh, the post course subjective outcome evaluation. Uh, also, the results are very good. And, and you see that we are very uh, conscious about evidence-based uh, programs because we, we do not think that having good intention is enough, okay? So we got post-lecture. Even after each lecture, we got evaluation. And then we got process evaluation. And then we got uh, qualitative evaluation. I will not go into the details. You can read my papers. So, <laughs> and then we got, well, we have generated around 30 papers already, including a book. So, um, um, so here the students said I've changed another person, okay? And then I, I think it is not just IQ, but EQ, those kinds of things, okay? And then we did the second piloting uh, including a quasi-experimental design. So here you can see that we see a uh, very clear interaction effect in some of the uh, outcome measures. So, so we're very happy to, to have uh, this kind of uh, findings. And then uh, I will skip this one, the personal reflection. Also, uh, I, I, because I will show you a video, you can see the, uh, 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 the narratives of the students, okay? So uh, we're now still offering this and we're still doing evaluation. Um, and I, I hope um, eventually we can come up with a uh, more uh, uh, efficient model and, and the pedagogy involved. So we're still um, crossing the river by uh, touching the stone in a way. Okay, so uh, we're still publishing papers on this. Um, so we asked the question, do university students change? after taking a subject on leadership and intrapersonal development? And our answer is yes. Uh, uh, we're, we're very pleased to say this. Okay, so let me show you a video so that you can have a better understanding of how we are doing this. No sound, no sound, ah yeah, okay. Hello everyone, uh, we are Group 3 and our group name is The Wisdom. That means we want to have more wisdom to be a real leader in the future and in the society. We are Group 2 and our group name is Radioactive. Because we think our group will radiate some positive energy. 
like a radio broadcast program. Also, we think we will be very active in this class. That's why we are called Radio Active. So the subject is very interesting. <laughs> we got small group teaching. How to express emotions? <laughs> um, compared to the other courses, like um, like in, in other other subjects, I think this courses is very relaxing. I think this lesson is very relaxing and. Um, Try something without using their hands. Our grandmothers think that uh, we should encourage people to join this course, and I feel I we are aware that they need to have a change. And, and also, uh, uh, not just in university, but also in primary school and high school. I think today's class is really meaningful. Yes, um, this, this day I use a lot of time to think what is the meaning of my life. Um, yes, um, I'm a major in academic and finance. I think in Holy you a lot of students think their meaning, their meaning of life is earning money, but I don't think so. This lecture is really good. It gives us a lot of opportunities to rethink our life. What do we want? Yeah, I quite like the topic of today's lecture because uh, it's really inspiring me to think about myself. Why I'm here, especially for the story of FMC, because uh, when we are here studying university, what is the purpose? Because we work hard, but we just receive what the lecture can give us. I mean, just, is this all assigned? So I'm thinking about <laughs> Why? The reason why I'm learning and right now, uh, what do I want to gain in my university life? Okay, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, um, it is uh, time we have some discussion. So, as I have mentioned, have we received any um, questions? Yeah, we got quite a lot. Okay. Ah, we got a very interesting question uh, we can start with. How to motivate the faculties to take the initiative in community engagement? 
Mr. Solomon, do you want to answer this question? Um, how to motivate the faculties to take the initiative in community engagement? So I, I, I think the question may arise from the fact that, okay, uh, it, is, it is good to have a community engagement, but uh, not me. Well, I think, can you hear me? I think that, uh, I think it's important in, in the academy to make the connection between civic engagement uh, and teaching and research, not to let it be a fringe activity or something that is a nice thing to do, but it's fundamental to educating students uh, in both their subject matter and in becoming socially responsible. And it's also an important area of scholarship. So that we have, for example, something called the Tufts Community Research Center, where we try to um, match faculty members uh, who would like to apply their scholarship to community needs uh, with community organizations that are working on that. Uh, a good example is we made a connection between faculty, a faculty member in our School of Medicine who is interested in the health risks of um, air pollution with community groups in some of the surrounding cities that are concerned about the impact of living next to highways. And so they, uh, we provided seed funding to support the faculty research, which they did in collaboration with community organizations. And that's led to a rather significant study of the health hazards of living by a major highway in Massachusetts, which actually has then gained something in the order of $10 million in third party funding. I think the, 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 the key is, is, is to try to bring this into the core mission of the university and to the core academic mission and, and try to avoid um, the separation that sometimes takes place uh, that, um, that allows faculty to think this is something, a nice thing to do but not central. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. Uh, do Professor Asa yeah. want to add? You hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the target of the, of course, the academic people at the universities or the colleges, their mission is to publish and to research. And if we found a way how we can make the connection between the community and the academic life and how we can encourage maybe foundations uh, to give uh, uh, part of the money for projects that lead the staff in the academic life to be involved in the community and maybe to publish their uh, work uh, about uh, their involvement. Of course, it will help the academic uh, people to uh, uh, put more energy and more time in their work with the uh, community at it, and it is not disturb their work by publishing because we know our staff, they are very, uh, uh, want to see their work published in, the, in good journals. So if we found a way how we can uh, maybe some foundation initiate a project that give the ability for the, the uh, researchers to be part of the community and maybe to publish something along the, their work and their expertise with the uh, community. Thank you. Any further views from the panel members? No? Well, actually, I got two uh, related questions. Uh, one is, what policy in institutions on personal matters for academics who committed in supporting social responsibility activities when comparing publishing academic papers in their disciplines. So maybe the president can answer this one. <laughs> no, it is just a joke. <laughs> and, and another one is, um, thanks for sharing many uh, valuable experience at the moment. Uh, none of the sharing around the practice, uh, most of the sharing is around the practice of instruction curriculum design. How about sharing a little bit about your experience 
of prom promoting USR in the organizational level, how to create that kind of ethos uh, or culture in the academic department and management level, especially when most of the university still focus on research productivity. Okay, so perhaps we can um, discuss this a bit more. I think that uh, uh, re realistically speaking, there is a tension involved. So it seems that both things cannot exist at the same time. So maybe I will ask uh, Professor Liu uh, whether this uh, um, uh, problem exists in China and then Professor Yi can uh, also um, uh, supplement. That is, uh, whether there is a tension between doing the good work in the community and uh, the pressure on uh, publication. I think okay. Well, this is a key question that you have raised. Well, for Chinese universities uh, to evaluate a teacher, you know, we would be looking at how many paper this teacher has issued. Uh, uh, how how many researches this uh, teacher have done? Uh, well, actually, we haven't really included the actual community practice into our evaluation system. Well, here I am seeing that, you know, the leaders of Hong Kong Poly U, you have put it uh, on a very a uh, high level. Well, I believe things are constantly changing. So going forward, I really agree with my other colleagues. In order to evaluate a university, it is looking at how many uh, useful people you have educated for society. So on this front, I believe going forward, the evaluation for professors in China will also change in the future. Um, perhaps in the future, we would also include service learning uh, or social responsibility uh, curriculums in China. You know, right now we don't have much of this uh, prospect, and uh, going forward, perhaps this could also be one of the evaluation uh, criteria on the professor's performance. Views on this issue. Uh, yes, this is indeed a very important issue. Just now, uh, Professor Liu has given a very good answer. Uh, for me, personally speaking, in recent years, with the promotion of researches in universities. Actually, uh, young teachers, young professors, they pay more and more attention to societal issues. Uh, I have also mentioned, you know, during our organization for students' activities, we would like young teachers to participate in the organizing teams. We have garnered quite a lot of support from these young teachers. On one hand, there are demands for teachers who need to focus on society uh, issues. And uh, on the other hand, they need to get involved to participate and lead students in these activities. So we hope that. Uh, we also expect that we can do better in this area. In fact, the, way, the better way is that our faculty could initiate actively uh, to participate into programs such as to nurture our students via surface learning and uh, social engagement. We hope that that is, that is what we hope for, To we will be able to help the, our faculty to be a bit um, uh, to, to 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 progress and then to self initiate. Benefit of uh, of not having a PhD. I think I'm the only person on the stage and not coming from the world of academia. Um, so I have a special a particular expertise on the subject. 
and there's definitely a tension um, that exists, and, and it's, a serious, it's a serious problem. I think there are three things that we can do about it. First of all, we need leadership from the top. If you don't have university leadership, if you don't have the, a president and a provost who believes in the importance of this, then you're not going to make any progress. Secondly, we're, <clears throat> we have to look <clears throat> at the system of tenure and promotion. Uh, I think it, it, interestingly, it's common among all of at least the three countries that have spoken, and perhaps of Australia, of Australia as well. Um, and we have to raise what is a very controversial issue of including in, in the evaluation of faculty for tenure and promotion uh, the extent to which their work uh, is, um, is socially beneficial or socially responsible or what have you, just as we have tried to incorporate the quality of teaching uh, in the evaluation. And the third thing, I think, is we, you have to devote resources. I, I, when I first arrived on campus as a new dean, I asked one of my colleagues, I said, how can I engage more faculty? And, and, and this dean of another school said to me, uh, you, you, can, you engage faculty with two things, carrots and sticks, and you have no sticks. <laughs> and so we've had to try to consolidate some resources so that we could actually make them available to faculty so that they would have the time and, and, and ability to focus on this. I just want to add, I agree with the, uh, Mr. Uh, Ellen about uh, the three uh, uh, things that you mentioned, and I want to add something about resources. I remember our institution 10 years ago, <coughs> before the Council of Higher Education put the issue of uh, social responsibility in the agenda, uh, and uh, at the beginning that we have less resources, less institution was, were involved uh, with the pro uh, national project, but today, after we give more resources to the institution, we have competition between uh, 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 colleagues and between institution about the flagship that they will raise the, uh, uh, to their uh, uh, activity. We see more and more uh, faculty members and also uh, in the administration uh, uh, level of the institution more and more they are involved in the uh, social responsibility uh, in, in the uh, community. Thank you. Other views from panel members? President, I really want you to say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank the panelists for all the uh, uh, very informative and inspiring presentations. Uh, the question about uh, conflict uh, in terms of devoting resources properly, I think is a serious uh, issue. But let me speak from a macro level, okay? from a system level. At PolyU, for example, we have 1,200 uh, instructors okay? uh, at different ranks. So, and the re reality, the fact of the matter is, we don't need each and every teaching staff involved in an effort like this, okay? All we need is sufficient number of them. And at PolyU, the report I've gotten is that, to this time, we have over 100 teaching staff involved in some way in doing service learning, which is alre already great. Uh, at steady state, we might need 150 of them, okay? But we don't need all 1,200 of them. Okay? So then the question is, within the entire teaching staff, are we able to find the teaching resources? Uh, for example, from faculties who are at a stage where they can afford to devote more time into doing the development of uh, service learning courses, and subsequently teaching these courses. Uh, for young academic staff, it's a little bit more challenging because they need to establish themselves uh, in terms of the, the research they do. So I think uh, for young academic staff, then 
if the person is interested in doing service learning, then I think the uh, challenge is for the uh, department head, the dean, the provost, and so forth, and myself in some cases, to uh, work out uh, a plan for that individual so that that individual in some way can be involved in service learning teaching, okay? And not to the extent that it would uh, negatively affect the person's performance in other areas such as research and other duties. So uh, it's not straightforward, but I think it can be managed and with some effort, I think as a university of this size or even smaller institutions, should have sufficient resources uh, in terms of hu uh, human power to uh, devote to supporting such a valuable cause. So thank you. I, I think we can see, Mr. President, why you're so effective. <laughs> <laughs> they are effective. <laughs> um, I'd just, just like to say I think it's also important that, and I wouldn't argue with anything that's been said so far, but I think it's also important that the university looks at all the resources that it can use uh, to promote social responsibility, not just the academic side of the equation, but also the other side of the equation, uh, so that it is a whole of university approach to promoting social responsibility. And that does start from the top uh, to filter down and to enable all staff to look at ways to engage not only themselves in terms of social responsibility activities, but also to promote it amongst students, wherever and however they engage with students. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, I think I have to stop here. Originally, I want to um, uh, discuss Albert's question. Albert Chow from Hong Kong, because his question is very good on uh, the, the issue of evaluation but I don't think we can do it now. So um, uh, we can continue the discussion over lunchtime, okay? So uh, please join me in uh, thanking this wonderful panel for that presentation, okay?